What's up, my friends? I bet you didn't think you'd hear from us so soon. Well, that's because me and Animal are bored, and um, like I said, we had that whole month off, so why not try some new things, right? Decided to uh, sit down, talk to each other for a little bit, discuss some news stories. Try and do this maybe once a week. At, uh, maybe call it Newsday Tuesday or something. <laughs> something stupid. But uh, yeah, we'll try it out, see how things work. It's just an excuse for us to sit down and talk to each other a little bit more. We don't get to see each other very often, so fuck it. Let's talk about some news stories and uh, try and have some fun here. Hello, Animal. How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. How's it going, JD? I don't know. I figured we'd try this fucking uh, weekly check-in. I don't know what I'm going to call this yet. <laughs> it's just we're going to bullshit about <laughs> some news, buddy. But um, you said uh, you had some shows uh, you wanted to talk about. Let's bring that shit up, man. Yeah, you know, I was uh, surfing the web and all it these days, and I saw that uh, that Static X show that's coming to the Forge on July 20th actually sold out. <laughs> Are you surprised by that at all? Um, you know, I, I I guess what it is is you you want to protect a legacy that Wayne Static has left in this world. I just hope that they do it in the right way, which I'm pretty sure they're going to do. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, but I'm just very curious as to what what little tricks are they going to pull out for this show or this tour? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I don't know, man. You it know? seems like the I only watched like the trailer. I didn't follow this shit too closely, but uh, for like Tony was the main guy, probably putting all this shit together, right? Tony Campos, right? Okay, right. so he. I don't know. Not that I follow him too closely, but it seemed like like he was pretty legit and wanting to do something good. I don't know, and God forbid oh, for sure. make money. I don't know. What the fuck do I know, right? It's not like I followed <laughs> what Static, do any of us static know? X that fucking closely, but you know, <laughs> Ivan. I think Ivan's probably the the Static X guy. Out of all of us, probably, right? Yeah, he is, man. Yeah, he's he's the one that got me turned on to them. I, you know, it's Static X was always that fine line between. I hate to say the you know that term new metal, but new metal slash kind of industrial at the same point, more industrial than metal. To be honest with you. Yeah, I agree. You know, and that. Yeah, it's always you know has been his bag. But uh, what's what's interesting to me is that they said that this is a star-studded event with special guests, and it makes you wonder, you know, is this going to be colleagues from back in the day? You know, like the Ozfest Night Nine days. You know, could Draymond be a part of it? You know, they were really really close friends. Well, you know, that's kind of interesting because I didn't I didn't know that part. At least maybe I, I probably just forgot about it. But if you're getting a lot of people to come in, it can't be just a straight up money grab, could it? Like, no, I don't if think they're just so going either. Out there and with the, some fucking hack that nobody knows, maybe, but it seems like a yeah. celebration of love if everybody's coming in to get, you know, like a cover, couple songs here and there. But I don't know. What do you think? You know, I, I think it's going to be done in the right way. I don't want to say it's a money grab because there's just there's just too much out there there with with Wayne. To, like I don't know. It's kind of hard to accept because don't you know? That's the thing is we don't know these guys. We just know them through the magazines and the interviews and everything. But if it was a true money grab, it would just basically be, I could have done something like, Oh, let's just have static X with a new singer playing all the old songs. Yeah. But it seems like they're really trying to just protect what was done in the past. Mm. Would you have gone to this or were, were you kind of thinking about it at all? Yeah, I honestly, I was, you know, not only the fact because I'm just curious to see what are they going to pull out, but also at the same point in time, they're going to have devil driver there also performing cold chamber shows and oh, i just want to hear what on earth that would sound like damn i didn't know that was a uh, part of the package deal like that because i remember you talking yeah. about that shit coming too but damn Man. yeah it's it's crazy i i don't know i i it's it's so funny because you get this monster of a machine devil driver playing this you know cold chamber not to say that there's anything wrong with cold chamber but they're just you know oil and vinegar at that point you know mm, yeah Damn. I don't know, but uh, from what I had read, Des used to manage Static X back in the day. Yeah, who hasn't he managed all of a sudden? Jesus Christ, finding all these bands. I know, right? Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a busy guy, man. I don't know, but uh, I, I think it, it's, it's very much the feel of it so far seems like it's going to be a bunch of friends getting together, remembering what Wayne has done for this industry and for that band, and you know, the lives that he's touched. You know, here behind the scenes, he was just an absolutely great guy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, man. So yeah, that's that's kind of my news about that. And also, I had a scene today that Mushroom Head and ICP are doing <laughs> a couple shows together as well. I feel like we're <laughs> speaking Ivan's language today. 
Yes, we I don't are. Know how yes, it feels we about are. ICP, Ooh. but uh, definitely some uh, mushroom head. I know that. <laughs> yes. Now that show, you know, ICP. I've, I've never listened to them on my own. It's you know, with friends or driving around. I have nothing against them. You know, I know that they're real, real good guys as far as donating to charities and, and just being really good to their fans. I can't say anything negative about them, but uh, Mushroom Head with them, I don't know. For some reason, it seems like it would be a good mix, doesn't it? Yeah, it seems like oddly like similar. <laughs> Maybe not so right. much in tone completely, but yeah, just the the makeup, the theatrics, and just the I don't give a fuck, and they've been doing it for so long, both of them at this point. It's just... It's kind of cool to see just people hanging in there doing their shit. Yeah, exactly, man. You know, hopefully they'll have enough uh, cleaning crew on because <laughs> I saw that when ICP played on the last tour they did, they did it with Attila. And okay. apparently it is just like Fago Central. I mean, they just had like Fago six, and seven come people everywhere, come. right? <laughs> <laughs> and what? Fago and come everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I heard about the ICP shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I th- I think it would be fun to see. You know, as they get older now, it's like you, you have these these thoughts about these bands, and you're like, oh, I would never see them or oh, whatever. But it's like as they get older, it's like, yeah, what the hell? It's, I'm just in it for a show, man. You know? Yeah, true. Well, why not? You know? I can check it out. Who the fuck do I care? We I ain't seen Mushroom Head since probably '06, so been fucking missing out on a lot. Yeah, man, that was a show we all went to together, wasn't yes, it? Yes, sir. House of Blues. Yeah, now that was a crazy show. That was great. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Fucking came out with those uh those fucking drums. Um, I don't even know what yep. you would call them, but they had the, like the lights and the water flicking up, and we we're close enough to really get hit by it. It was a great fucking show. I love that shit. For sure, man. It was just so dark and so evil. And I want to say, I don't even know the name of that song, but wasn't it that that brain hemorrhage song off of uh, XX? The first one that they played was a uh, damage done. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Because he had the little walkie, not walkie talkie, but you know, the speakerphone. Oh, thing. yeah, yeah. Uh, what do they call it? Megaphone? Microphone? Megaphone? Megaphone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's right. That's right. You know, I've seen them so many times. It just kind of blends together with so many different lineups over the years as well. Well, that's cool because i never seen them with uh, J Man. I only saw them that one time with uh, Waylon. Oh, that's, you know. It's it's classic. I, I love J Man. I got nothing negative to say about him, but I, I think that uh I don't know. It just it just seems different. I'll tell you what though, the last time I saw him had all three of the singers and that was just overlooked. Oh, it was Jesus too much. Christ. You think it was it was too much for you? I think it was. You know what? I think it's just distracted with everything going on. The the parts that I wanted to hear J Man do and he wasn't even doing them. Like fast rappy stuff. I, I really thought he would take over, but he didn't. Really? Yeah. It was weird. I don't know. But they they were super, super cool. We had actually uh, done an interview with them right after they were done because their press was only for after the performance. And there was one other Chicago publication that was before us, and they had to do with their masks on and everything. And as soon as they were done, I came and sat down. They're like, hey, man, we're just getting ready, you know, just, you know, sit down, chill out. And J-Man looks over at me. He goes, so are we doing this like video or audio? And I'm like, it's up to you, man. You know, it's a hundred goddamn degrees outside. What do you want to do? <laughs> he goes, oh, man, that's so awesome. Cause everybody always wants to do video. Can we do audio? I'm like, sure. All three of them just took their masks off and just rang those things out, man. Oh, like, man. oh this is so much better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can imagine it's such a pain in the ass, but it, it, <laughs> they're so cool. Like their masks and shit. It's like, I can see people wanting to do that, but at the same time, I wonder if it, like they put uh, portray like the character a little bit more if they still got the mask on and shit, you know. Like if you could take them out unmasked and maybe get a little bit more real. I don't know. Maybe I'm just huh. being crazy. No, no, that makes sense. I mean, because you got to figure, you got to have that alter ego. It's not like you could have had, you know, Dave Brocky talking about Odorous when he was Brocky and vice versa. You know. Right. Yeah. You see Odorous just talking bullshit like he's just regular Brocky and stuff. Yeah. This doesn't make sense. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, it's a little man, bit more I, open, I, I, I think, you know? Yeah. Oh, it just makes me so sad. I think Brocky would have been the, uh, well, I don't want to say Brocky. I think Odorous would have been the ultimate interview, man. <laughs> that, that's the one we could have <laughs> had a lot of fucking fun with, dude. Yeah. Oh, Guaranteed. Because yeah. he, he was always on. You know what I mean? You didn't have to worry, oh, is he going to kind of be a little bit of whatever? It was him. You know, like, you hear these stories from backstage that when he was in his getup, he was Odorous. Even the people that had known him and, and were working with him and being his roadies and stuff. It wasn't Dave, it was Odorous. When you had his stuff on, you respected him, man. Oh, hell yeah. That's fucking sweet. So it's yeah, about 2.15. What you got, man? 
So, um, what else do I have here? So we talked about those two things. Did you see that article? I don't, and I can't cite any sources because I don't know it, but did you see about how there's some articles going out about how uh, Dave Mustaine apparently had given Allison uh, his blessing to try out for Metallica in 2001? Yeah, I did see that. Uh, I feel like that popped up maybe like a month ago, too, for some reason. I, oh, did I, it? I kind of glanced at it, but um, I don't know. I, I, I don't see that. I, w- I wouldn't have seen it happen in any way, but... No. <laughs> I think... Yeah, I don't know. How do you feel about that? Would you want to see it? Do you care? Uh, you know, honestly, I, I... Now, here's the thing. If you had asked me 10 years ago, I, I would have been like, no, whatever. But I really have grown to love Megadeth and mm. to listen to Megadeth without Allison there. I, I mean... Allison, obviously, is, this is just an understatement. He is like one of the best rhythm bass players, I think, out there in the game. Folks, today, man. Yeah, I, I, I agree yeah. with that. I, I feel like everything happened the right way, the way it should. I agree. I agree. You know, I, I know things got messy between the two days there for a while, financially and rights and yada, yada, yada. But I think, you know, everybody needs a break sometimes and, uh, you know, things work out for the best. But I'll tell you right now, if, if he would have gotten that gig, he wouldn't have been doing dual roles. It would have been Metallica and that's it. Yeah. I, I could see that for sure. Cause I mean, that's no, 2001's round fucking world needs a hero. That's probably, I mean, right before that, they probably had risk. I would imagine. So that's probably, yeah. yeah cause that's about the time I saw. Yeah. World needs a hero tour. That's when I saw him at the, the star, which is a fucking okay. awesome place to see a show, but it's usually when you're coming down off a career, you know what I mean? Right. You know, that's true, man. Isn't that sad? I feel like that kind of like with, with all those bands, like doing these casino tours and stuff like that as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. you know, they're making more money than us, man. We would just <laughs> ask for a ticket to the seafood buffet and we're good to go. <laughs> yeah, it don't take much to please us. A fucking uh, a trip to fucking Burger King works for me. <laughs> 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 fucking, um, so I got only got a couple of uh, stories here. It's not, there's not too much yeah. going on, but how do you feel about Greta Van Fleet? I definitely think that it's one of the new and upcoming artists just because with the obvious comparison of Zap and everything like that, they're getting a lot of movement. They're getting a lot of uh, buzz underneath them. I think that potentially they have the opportunity to be one of the biggest bands in the next, I would say maybe three years. We're talking headlining the big festival shows, not this year. They're coming up, but I don't think they're headlining material, but, if you look at like Sonic Temple and you look at Welcome to Rockville and stuff, I, I could almost guarantee that they'll be on one of those big stages next year. Yeah, I feel like they're pretty much blown up. It's kind of like a love hate yep. relationship. Like for me, I don't, I don't need this shit. Uh, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to talk too much shit on them. But I just, right. I can't see. It, it's so obvious. You know what I mean? Like uh, if you right. did this with any other band, I, don't, I just don't know how that would work. I mean, even still, yeah. Panther did the fucking Van Halen like covers and tribute shit, but they got famous when they started doing their own fucking, you know, their shit. It's still like an ode to the '80s, but they kind of right. gave it their own stamp and personality. Like, there's a, a little bit of a sound. They they kind of capture that Led Zeppelin sound, this Gret- Greta Van Fleet. But dude, I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not into the the songs that I heard at least. It's just no. so fucking it, blatant. It, it, I, I just I can't. That's do us. It. <laughs> <laughs> He loves that too much, and we're the old school generation, man. I see definitely the merits of getting yourself behind a band like that, backing them. But uh, at least let's say that for like the mainstream kind of stuff. But as far as like us, and there's a lot of hate out there, like you said. But you know, look um, at it, it doesn't um, tickle me because this shit—they're not the first to kind of do this shit. Because let's not forget, like 10, 15 years ago, we had this fucking Jet and um, what's that? Australian band Airborne or whatever, where it's just like a rip off yep. of fucking ACDC. Like now we moved yeah. on to Led Zeppelin. And I, I just, uh, I've always thought that shit was lame. Never been Dude, into I that agree. shit. I hate Jet. It was like that Euro trash kind of period there. For yeah, a and, while. They, and they walked around like they had a fucking attitude or something. You know what I mean? Like they were hot shit. At least that's how it felt yep. to me. It's like, fuck you. I don't need this shit. Oh my God. But, um, oh, it's terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> I remember Airborne. It was at that year at Mayhem. Remember, Airborne played right before Machine Head did on that, on yeah, that like, little side stage. Yeah, this. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> um, so do you remember that single that they had, that Too Young, Something Too Fast or whatever? Yeah, whatever the fuck sounds like it would have been famous in the 70s or 80s. Yeah, that yeah kind of exactly, yeah. exactly, man. Oh, Didn't they have, God. like, the fucking same logo as, like, um, God, it must have been, like, a Metallica or a fucking... 
uh, like an ACDC font. Yeah, I, re- I came to do it like I remember like it was all in caps and it was like in red too, wasn't it? Yeah, some bullshit. Like, God, do you have yeah. any original thought in your fucking brain? Anything? Anything at all? Oh, I can't get behind this. I don't know. Uh, I, I bring up Greta Van Fleet because uh, apparently Steve Wilson, I don't know who the fuck Steve Wilson is, but he, he, uh-huh. called, uh, he called Greta Van Fleet, uh, calls him a boy band version of Led Zeppelin. And I can't I can't say that's too far <laughs> off. <laughs> um, you know, here's the thing. The, it's one thing to compare a band because they sound similar, but to be able to pull off the ethical integrity that Zeppelin had, I, I just, I don't see the comparison there. <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. I just I, I listened to a couple songs, man, but I just there was nothing there for me, nothing at all. No, not at all. They're they're all over uh, Sirius XM right now. I saw that they were at SNL a couple of weeks ago, and it's just so funny because you can so tell when that rock band or whatever you want to call it sells their soul to the devil type deal because all of a sudden they're everywhere, but just as cats are everywhere. They're not going to be around. You know, and I hate to say that, but I, I just don't see the potential of them being one of those iconic bands for the next 10 years, you know? Yeah, because you really won't know where the fuck you stand until you have those low moments and that right. the fame ain't there. It's like that shit that mm-hmm. happened in the 90s with Testament and shit. They kept doing what the fuck they were doing. They didn't care about the right. fads. And obviously right. they're still here today. But yeah, what's yep. your, if, if your gimmick's not working, then you're fucking done. If what you're leaning on is right. a gimmick, it's fucking, it's out. It's out for me. Exactly. Exactly. You can't try and pull off anything fake in this day and age. You know what I mean? Everybody can tell what you're doing. Yeah. You know, I don't know. There's a lot of natural organic shifts. Like you look at ghosts, you look at ghosts, what they are now. And you look at them nine years ago, you'd be like, that ain't shit. but then you find out that, you know, this is what they've been planning all along. It was an organic and seamless transition. Yeah. Whereas some of these other bands just kind of come out like, Oh, well, this ain't good. So let's just completely jock our style differently and take it from there. <laughs> That's what maybe we should do this. What, what am I saying? Maybe I should take note here. We'll just jack off a band. It doesn't even matter. Just pick one. <laughs> yeah, we'll remember that whole hardcore phase, man. When when we were jamming, you know, we that one day in the basement, I'll never forget. We put together like a song, and what was it like two minutes? And we're like, if we if we did this, we would be up on top for about three months, and then we drop right back off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all we need. We just need like a paycheck for a couple paychecks, and we'll be all right. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. And how we took the the last of our local band money and we spent it at Hooters. So I mean, come on. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah, man. The only other things uh, there's a, two stories. There was that shit Howard Stern said about Chris Cornell, but that one's I don't know if there's much weight to that one. But uh, the other one I found today was there, there's an update to Spotify because now they're offering okay. that free Hulu subscription. Really? Have you heard about this shit? No, not at all. Okay, I just found this one, so bear with me here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Apparently, they they offered this shit before. Uh, the bundle was a premium rate of twelve ninety nine compared to nine ninety nine. Uh, now, all premium members for Spotify will get this shit Hulu and Spotify at nine ninety nine. I don't know if. Uh, I guess that's got to be like Hulu's premium version too, right? I would assume. I don't know. That's a good question because. That Hulu Premium is is really expensive, man. They That's they had it, I believe, in two different tiers. All right, so this shit kind of go it goes in a little bit more detail here. Uh, let me mm. see. Uh, I don't know who the fuck said this. I'm, I'm, it doesn't really matter because I'm I'm gonna boycott boycott Spotify anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> so somebody uh, somebody from Spotify said, just take a look at the um, uh, Hulu's uh, that Handmaid's Tale that show. Um, yeah. So apparently uh, it says that the show quickly headed to Spotify to stream uh, the songs woven into many episodes in the pivotal scenes, U.S. streams of Bruce Springsteen's Hungry Heart and the Dusty Springfield classic I Only Want to Be With You. Uh, I thought that was I thought that was Hootie and the Blowfish, but I guess I was mistaken. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whoever this Dusty Springfield is, uh, I don't know. But those two songs rose 86% and 127% the week after those songs were played in season two. So... And then uh, Kate Bush's woman's work uh, topped up at like 433% after it was in the the first episode of that second season. So apparently they're joining force, for, uh, forces here. Yeah, that's how you speak. Huh. But I don't know. <laughs> and then like on top of that, you, you just had these fucking, this news that you're going to sue songwriters because they want 
like they're going to increase like um, the streaming royalties over 44% over five years. It's not even all up front. This is going to take time over five yeah, years. That's so. ridiculous. That's sticking that it right shit. to the artist and the fans, man. And then apparently you got enough money where you can combine these and not fight. Nobody's losing money on this shit. I don't know, man. Fuck, yeah. fuck this shit. No, the problem is, is that they're seeing this since Spotify has become so huge. They're seeing the potential of the billions that they're going to be able to make off of these artists. And they want more. It's not enough that they get, no, you know, these artists, man, they, they, it's terrible. That's why it's so important to go to these shows, buy the albums, you know, just like the elite, man. Yeah, I saw, you know, I know you bought that special edition package with the yeah. album and the poster and all that stuff. And it goes right to the bands and that's how it should be. It's not going to these record execs that have probably never even met half of the bands that are on their roster. And it, it's crazy too. Cause the, the fucking streams are so low per song, but uh, you know, and like I said, it's not going to hurt the fucking, the big time names anyway. <laughs> it's no. gonna hurt the bands that we fucking love and care about and shit exactly. that are struggling to make it as it is. And then um, I exactly. always thought that Spotify got paid for the music by the licenses of like a catalog from the record label itself. So you might right. like if one person disagrees, well, you don't fucking own the right to disagree. Like you're in, <laughs> we own your fucking music, you know. Oh, right. It's insane to me. And then they're gonna fucking sue the songwriters. Unbelievable. Yep. No, that's crazy, man. You know, it's uh, that's the funny thing is that the music industry is trying to make it seem as if the music industry was is still how it's financially operating twenty years ago, and it's not going to happen. So you're going to see more and more things like this happening, man. I don't know what the future holds for Spotify. I wouldn't be surprised now that there was Hulu that they would start doing it in tiers. Like, let's say if Spotify said, you know what, you have the premium right now, well, guess what, we're going to offer premium too. Because in Premium 2, you won't get any commercials, but if you're in Premium 1, you're going to get a commercial every third song. And it's only 30 seconds, but we still need to do it. I'm telling you, that's how that stuff is going to end well, up what's, being. What's crazy, too, is uh, even if you don't have the the Premium, you're still, like, Spotify is still getting all the fucking, has to be getting all the ad revenue from the free service shit. Right, that's I true. I assume. Absolutely true. Because I'm, I'm sure they're not fucking spreading that shit out sharing no, uh, that with God the artists no, and stuff. No. I mean, not that I'm an expert, just, but what the fuck do I know? No, 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 no. You know, just like <laughs> this Hulu, for example, you know, I watch all those uh, those silly shows, as you like to say, on Adult Swim, like the 10, 11 minute shows or whatever. Yeah. I was watching Eric Andre last night and we're talking about an 11 minute episode. There was a commercial break at least every other three and a half minutes and they were getting reset at higher. So the first one was 60 seconds. The next one was 85 seconds. The last one was at like 98 seconds of commercial. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm so glad they're, they're, I steal this off of somebody. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, I know. And then that's the thing is I'm not going to pay Hulu so I don't have to watch commercials. That's ridiculous. I'm already paying for the service as it is. Ugh. Ugh. I don't know. Man. <laughs> I know. But if you listen to Wasted Attention, there is no ads. There's nothing. So, you know, you could get us like this. There can be if you guys are willing to pay. Just so, you know, like <laughs> Sure, we'll get picked up on Spotify. That's fine. Like, the next episode. Well, you know, guys, Spotify really isn't all that bad. Uh, for, for tier two, I mean, it's only 30 <laughs> seconds of a commercial. <laughs> you can skip it after, what, uh, 25 seconds. We'll make it after 25 seconds. You can skip it for a 30-second commercial. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh man, uh, I feel like I had another point, but I don't know. It's it's. I think uh, I think it speaks for itself, man. It does. It does. You know, I just got to keep supporting the artists in any way you can. You know, you go to the shows, you buy a T-shirt, you do whatever. At least you know it goes to them. You know, if you have Spotify, you can't beat yourself up. You know what I mean? Everybody's different, but just do what you can to support who you can. Hell yeah, man! And then. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I, like, like I said, the only other thing was that Howard Stern uh, talking about Chris Cornell, and it was just uh, he couldn't see him killing himself. <laughs> but yeah, uh, which may be true. But I mean, I, the more we learn, the more it's like uh, that shit doesn't matter. You know, the fame and the money no. and the pussy and yeah, if I look good, yeah, maybe life would be a little bit easier. But I, th- I think it was yeah. like a tongue in cheek kind of comment. I didn't hear the shit. I'm just kind of reading off of this stuff. But I feel like uh, yeah, you can't say anything. And have it not be blown out of proportion, so. Exactly, and I think that's just honest. I think it's Howard being Howard. You know, you look at Howard, what he was, he was, you know, everybody cared about what he had to say. But you, you, in, in a conversation you've had with 10 people, how many people have said, hey, did you listen to Howard during this week? Fucking yeah. nobody. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of the thing where he's just been, he's always that kind of guy that throws shade at himself first and always wishes he had something more. But, uh, and then you see like these people that have maybe certain things that he doesn't. And then, uh, I don't know, you just see that shit doesn't matter. Like, you know, with Robin Williams and Chris Cornell and now oh, Chester Bennington, this, the shit's just happening more and more. And it's like, uh, <laughs> if you really want to get deep and philosophical, I mean, there's something probably just eating away at all of us. Like, we're not finding that meaning in our life. <laughs> right. No, I, I get it. I get it. But you got to be careful with what you say because even if he didn't say it in a negative way, you know how these other sites are, are going to try and narrow in on any negative complex and it's going to be headlines. Look, he said that, what is it, like last week? And now it's almost on like every publication. Like you can't even look at Facebook. It's because they have like, so little to fucking talk about. Like they're constantly looking for clickbait and all this shit. And like if anybody's no. ever listened to fucking Howard Stern, I think you should know what the fuck you're in store for. You know what I mean? But exactly. everybody gives it too much, too much fucking attention, in my opinion. Yep. I don't know. I agree. And he, he never needed to make up a story. He just tells it like it is. I mean, Private Parts was probably like one of my top 20 in the 90s. <laughs> I love that movie. It's so hilarious. <laughs> it's easily one of my favorite movies ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's, 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 it's really underrated. Like, anytime, like, something's on, like, TV, like on NBC, I'm always like, WNBC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> WNBC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just classy, my friend. That is, man. Well, speaking of movies, we're uh, we're looking to set up a day to go see Captain Marvel, huh? Yeah, I know you weren't too hot on it from what you've heard, so. Yeah, you know, you, you gotta, after now watching uh, Ant-Man and the Lost, you and I haven't really got me going. It was good shit, man. <laughs> it was really good. It's funny. <laughs> it was really, really good. Yeah, it was. I, I was pleasantly surprised. You know, the thing about Paul Rudd is that I feel like every movie he's in, he's always that quirky mid 40s really really nice guy type deal yeah so i don't really see a lot of variety there but um he's, he's never really disappointed and ant-man I, I mean i didn't really like the first ant-man too much but uh i'll give this one like a good 87 percent. i was satisfied and just that last little scene alone was was worth the entire two hours of that movie yeah i think uh i think his friends in those movies are probably <laughs> probably the best parts like just the Easily. answer between all of them, it's just uh, yeah. I I think that's what the what sells the movie to me. <laughs> My companion, yeah, a, a lot uh, of those guys. Yeah, I didn't know that was Ti. By the way. <laughs> oh my god, is it Ti? Yeah, I just found that shit out. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. See, oh my god, I learned something today. That's insane. Yeah, I, dude. Uh, I think people are probably just ready to shit on Marvel all of a sudden now. You know what I mean? But. I, well, I don't are. see there's any reason not to like this. You know, I, th- I think no. uh, the hype was overblown with Black Panther, and I think this is probably getting a little too much shit because you're like, ah, I don't know. I think it's going to be solid. I think, yeah, you know, you're going to have to see it to, to see Endgame. There, there's no doubt about it. So, you know, obviously we know why people are ripping on the movie. I, I think those are those those negative connotations are so flawed. I'm more looking at it in the negative way where it just didn't really uh, didn't really spark me too much. It kind of looked like some of the same old stuff. It almost seems like it's like kind of like space filler in a way. Well, let's be honest. Like all these movies probably follow that same path. I mean, if you really think that's about it. That's true. But, I mean, that's 90 fucking percent of like any fucking movie you see. Just because it says Marvel on it doesn't mean that it's any fucking different than the same formula everybody else is using for their fucking movies. You're right. You're right. You Maybe it's I mean? oversaturation too, though. You know? Yeah. Uh... I don't know. It's like I was thinking about this the other day. The whole James Cameron thing. I'm like, he was real down on it. But I'm like, uh, didn't you make fucking Terminator and then you know True Lies? We just, I just watched True Lies the other night. I was like, I don't know if you know this, but that's a superhero movie. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I don't think Arnold Schwarzenegger is fucking taking down an entire terrorist regime by himself and his fucking <laughs> homemaker wife. I, yeah, I don't know what you want to call that, but I I, I call that a superhero movie, buddy. That's a good point. Wow, I never even thought of it in that way, man. And then that Terminator, you can't kill that thing, it's coming after you. Yeah, it's not like he's fucking making like heist movies and shit. <laughs> right. I don't know the, right. so far up his own ass. Get the fuck out of here. Avatar, what do you think Avatar is? <laughs> Just because you don't fucking call them superheroes doesn't mean it's not fucking something else. Ugh. Oh my god, that blew my mind about True Lies because like that's perfect. It's Tom Arnold is like the quirky sidekick. Dude, I love that fucking movie, but god damn, let's call it what the fuck it is. 
<laughs> oh, that is fantastic. Oh, we, that's a, you know what? Wasted attention just needs to, to ditch the music stuff and we just need to watch 90s like comedies and action Dude, flicks, man. That's for fun real. To Let's do go. It. I want to watch this movie with you again because uh, that and Dirty Work because I want to get Ivan back in on there because I, I always talk to, <laughs> oh, talk to him about Dirty Work. <laughs> oh, my God. Speaking of, uh, of Norm MacDonald, have you ever heard of that show that Norm's on, uh, Mike Tyson Mystery Show? Is that the one where he's got that... What is is a pigeon? Yeah, he's a pigeon. Oh, he does the voice of the pigeon. Yeah, he's the voice of the pigeon. I've seen a couple episodes. I remember it being fucking pretty funny. Yeah, it was pretty funny. It's totally uh, Norm Macdonald as a pigeon. I mean, that's all. It's like how Ryan Reynolds, our Deadpool is Ryan Reynolds in a costume. Pigeon <laughs> is definitely just Norm Macdonald as a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know, man. Now you got me wanting to talk about movies and shit, but yeah, I don't know. I know, man, it's wasted attention. We, we, we go from point A to point B to, to F to X, back to A. Some would say it's our strong point. It is our strong point, <laughs> it's, absolutely. It's the only point we got. <laughs> At least we're confident with it. Yeah. But, but then, well, let's focus on that. Let's, uh, let's definitely, you know, plan our day, you know, you know off of this, because, you know, no one cares how we plan our day. But uh, the next uh, phone in, we should be talking about Captain Marvel. Fuck yeah, we'll uh we'll definitely have it. Well, you you want to go see it Sunday, right? Yeah, I was thinking about Sunday. Sunday seems like a good day for uh for a movie, doesn't it? Of course it does. Yeah. What else are you gonna do on a we'll fucking Sunday? On... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to church. Well, our our last episode <laughs> proved that we cannot go in there. <laughs> for real, I'm not even allowed like within fifty feet of that place. All no, of no, not at all. Ah, oh, there's something I was not gonna tell all. you. I forgot. God damn it. I had something for you, man. Oh, um, we can use these to do those uh, little sports things you want to do, like uh, little check-ins every now and then, too, if you want. Yeah, absolutely, man. I love these. They'll kind of keep the, uh, kind of keep the, like, the appetizer going. You know, you're, you're <laughs> waiting on your chicken strips, but we're going to bring you out some lemon rice soup. Hey, look, more content ain't never hurt nobody. No, no, not at all. So anybody listening, you know, just give us money and stuff, and we're good. <laughs> We'll make like five <laughs> different shows. We'll we'll have our oh I was thinking for our gaming episode, um our show yeah. maybe uh maybe calling it two dudes one couch. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. All the man, perverts that really, really cool. Like what it's a reference to, and then uh it makes sense because we're all sitting on the couch doing nothing. Yeah, exactly. No, I love that. I would just a working like idea. We're working. Nobody better steal that shit. I'm gonna copyright that shit as soon as we get off of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right now, right now, I'm getting it right now. Arch twelve. <laughs> but uh look i i know you kind of took some time away from what you're doing right now i know you probably gotta get back to what you're probably doing here in a minute so uh, hey, if man, you got nothing else man i feel good i feel good too man this was this was good i really enjoy this all right anytime you want to do this man you let me know will do i'm bound to run into you sooner or later <laughs> hopefully all right <laughs> <laughs> all right bye buddy bye-bye